I'm happy to see that finally scamming is kind of over. And and when I mean scamming, I mean like soft scamming. You know, like the scamming where like you're a bit shy to do it up front. So you kind of do it through like a conduit, right? You, you kind of do it through like a proxy. You don't really do it up front. You don't really like own the scam yourself like a dsp dark side feel where you keep lying about you know how much money you have you don't really put numbers on things you don't want anybody to think you have money so they can keep giving you money you're just up front with your scam or like a boogie you just fake the counter you just hold it down and stand 10 tones of your lie i feel like people that kind of soft scam you know that kind of like scam from a distance scam from afar with their hands stretched out because they don't want to be seen as a scammer or like a beggar and stuff they're the worst type of people and that sort of scamming is over why do i say that why do i say that you wonder because of this story courtesy of itv it says a carer who found his car was destroyed by middlesbrough rioters after 12 hour shift left traumatized so this young gentleman here his car was left outside in the streets during the race riots that took part took you know hold of the uk the last couple of weeks and stuff and unfortunately his car was lit on fire and flipped over as you can see there obviously you know living where he lives he needs a car to get around um everyone was really upset for him and his workplace decided to start a gofundme for him to help support him and his cost of buying a new car so the i think the the goal for the gofundme was three thousand pounds um obviously very quickly after the outpouring after people seeing his posts and feeling sorry for him they donated way more money than that and i think the final total got up to sixty thousand pounds now the funny thing about this is that even though he got way more than he wanted which is a good thing his workplace decided to renege they decided to renege on the deal and they said they would only give him three thousand out of that 60 <laughs> and they would give the rest of that money left over to charities and shit because that's all he needed for the car so i love that because that is an example of somebody soft scamming scamming from afar being afraid to really scam with his chest because gofundme is one big giant scam in general right everybody on there is basically scamming for the most part there are some genuine cases on there but most people are scamming especially people within like you know the field of like oh i want to get my you know i want to i want to get gender reaffirming surgery and shit there's no bigger scammer than people that want to become trans they love to recycle that shit right and use that money and kind of you know run fucking six gofundmes in one calendar year no one says anything because you know you don't want to hurt those people but in general everyone's fucking scamming over there so i i love the whole go gofundme scam thing but in this particular case i feel like this particular guy was probably too proud as an englishman right as a british person probably too proud um you know to actually beg and ask for the money up front himself so he let his work beg for him because it made his sob story look hit a bit more harder but then his work pulled an okie doke on him and said haha you thought he was getting 60k you thought you could quit you thought you could maybe go and do your own thing start a business go move back home with your family na 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 you are still gonna work here we're gonna give you the free grand you're gonna be happy about it and i fucking love it this is proof that scamming from afar is over if you want to scam now you have to scam with your full face you have to put your fucking date of birth out there your ni number your passport your id you have to scam with your whole face and your whole chest and take what comes with it you're gonna get people taking the piss out of you in the comments you're gonna get people calling you a beggar calling you a fucking you know wage thief saying you got your tin cup out calling you da -da -da -da. they're gonna kill you names but in the end you're gonna get your money so you're gonna get temporary embarrassment and bullying online but in the end you're gonna get your 60k because now he's not gonna get anything so the update here says Kershaw the shade borough the employer who raised 65,000 in the end it was 65,000 for the man whose car was set alight during the Middlesbrough riots will only give him 3,000 now I actually like the GoFundMe um platform because if I'm not mistaken if you don't reach your total no I think you have to reach like 75 percent of your total then you get your money but if you don't you don't get anything but if you go over it they still give you it but then if you go over it you're also um you're also more susceptible to more investigation and checks so they're gonna double check things so if they find out that you're maybe raising the money under false pretense you can lose it which is heartbreaking imagine the people that go on gofundme most likely if you're on gofundme you need that money you're not you're cut you're scamming but you're also scamming to like actually survive to actually live you're not scamming to like 
you know, as like a crypto millionaire trying to buy another yacht, you're scamming because you actually need groceries. So you actually need that money. So can you imagine scamming and kind of begging for money on GoFundMe, raising more than you actually need, and then not getting the money because of the extra checks and balances they do? Ooh, that would hurt, right? Never update regarding this. Another update. Brendan, um, the guy, speaks out and says he plans to sue his employer and his trauma is now bigger than when he saw his car get burnt. So he did all this shit, right? This whole blurb on the news, videos of his car on fire. He came out on the spot where the car was with his hands on his waist, looking, doing that whole fucking pity party, sob story, X Factor nonsense type of shit, right? Looking really sad, wanting people to feel sad for him, giving pity donations. It worked, but then it didn't work. <laughs> I love that it ended up not working for him. So this is actually a video of him talking, I think. Let's just play the video. So my company. Let's play the, the let's play the video of him actually speaking. I'm 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 curious to see what this guy sounds like and how hurt he must sound in the voice about the situation. Because this this will break my heart. This is me. All I wanted was everything to go away. But when Dylan came up to destroy the only thing that I hold dear. That was when everything just went wrong. So <laughs> I thank you guys in whatever you want to do. You want to raise a good for me. That would be great. That would be wonderful. But at this time, the reason why I want to be calm about everything, because the lawyers I'm contacting, the Nigerian lawyers in the UK here, if I'm contacting and getting in touch with them, they said they're going to get back to me. I'm here to, get, I'm here to hear from them. Bro, you're scamming for a car. Like you, The whole thing is preposterous. Your car got burnt during a race riot. Cool. It's un unfortunate. But you work a full-time job. You could have easily saved that money again and bought yourself a car. yourself. You don't need people to give you money to buy a car that you already bought for yourself in the first place. You could easily save another... Like, maybe not get the £3,000 car. Maybe you were lucky to get that one at that time. The conditions it was in. Fair enough. But you don't need to get another car of the exact same value. Just for the time being, you could get yourself a nice little banger, a nice little run around for a grand and let that keep it moving and go from there. But instead of doing that, he's wasting money by hiring lawyers. Lawyers for a GoFundMe. bro. you are down bad. Then, if they're going to give me a pro bono to sue my company for every last penny they have, for what they did to me because and i don't care about whatever protest that is happening is for you to come in and begin to destroy my name because i did not agree to your shenanigans that is extreme <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine because i know what I, i'm a nigger myself right i'm an n-i-g-g-e-r i'm a fucking textbook card carrying member of that collective i know this man i know this brother i know this brother was spending that money already. He was spending that money. He was thinking about paying off his council, his you know, um, his council tax. He might have an overdue phone bill. He's gonna send some money back to his mom. He was gonna buy that suit that he saw in fucking I don't know H and M. He was gonna buy himself some fucking Alexander McQueen trainers. He's gonna get himself some Sauvage Dior aftershave. He was maybe gonna go to Nobu. You know. He, he's going to get, like, he already, you know, you know a nigga, he already had that money. That money was accounted for, bro. Mum's going to get this, dad's going to get that, bro's going to get this, a little bit for this. Maybe we're going to go to fucking, maybe I'm going to go to Zanti, right? Maybe I'm going to go to Magaloop or something, chill out with the bro skis and shit. Maybe go to Dubai. He was already counting on that money. Maybe he had some holiday, he saved up at work, vacation time. He was looking forward to it. And then his workplace just said, your dreams? <sighs> Over. So cruel. I don't care about what people say. I move on with my life every day. Even at work, we see it every day. But I don't care about it. I move on and what to do. Because I believe people are different. So I leave them to their own life. But for you to come in, you have not, you have not talked to me since yesterday or said anything or test me. But for me to come online, just got up this morning, I wanted to prepare for church and I couldn't anymore. Because <laughs> I want to prepare for church. You want to prepare for church, bro. He couldn't pray. That day he was struggling to pray. Because that's the one day where you think, oh shit, God is real. Because sometimes our faith is very, 
It's very loose, our faith, right? Our faith can be very shaky. We need actual, demonstrable, hard, black and white proof. And sometimes you're like, you know, it's horrible because it's very toxic Christianity. Because sometimes you can be walking down the street, yeah? <laughs> and you kick someone's wallet on the floor and you see money pour out of it. You pick up and you think, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. And he's like, hold on. That's theft. You're stealing someone's money. But you think because you prayed so hard that God is now giving you the gift of someone else's hard-earned money and now you're taking their wallet and their ID and their bank card and you're running it up and you think it's a blessing from God. So in this regard, he probably found it so difficult to pray that day. There's probably the one time he legitimately questioned his faith. He was like, God, if what you, if what, if what you give us cannot be taken away, how can this be taken away by the white man? You know, like, it's like, you can't figure it out. Like, what? You blessed me, and now you're unblessing me. In real time, in 4K, in public, on social media. Uh-oh. My roommate just sent me a message. Uh, young man, go online. I went online, and I saw it. <laughs> now, the trauma is bigger than the first day I saw my car. I don't care about what people say. I move on with my life every day, even at work. With it. To be fair, I like how he's moving with this the trauma he's talking about the issues about his mental health i love that he's doing that like karen white flag i'm a victim shit because that plays well with people's emotions yeah you want to you want to tug at their emotions you don't want to seem like a strong like tough st like a strong black man you don't want to seem like a typical stiff upper lip british person no 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 lean into being a victim lean into being a crybaby lean into being fucking helpless lean into it like lean into it because you might actually get your 60k if you do that you're gonna lose a bit of your dignity you're gonna lose a bit of your pride right you might not look at your, you might not like what you see of yourself in the mirror you might not like you see yourself in the mirror but you're gonna get your money if you do it that way because if you do it the other way and you try to act like nothing bothers you and you know you actually be a man about it and just keep it moving you try to run a scam you got scammed instead and just keep it trucking you won't get any money. But if you play into the whole like, ah, my mental health, I can't sleep, I have PTSD. Like, ooh, that shit can work. Um, it continues. Here's the update. So here's the update. Here's the update, right? Courtesy of the page. Hi, everyone. Oh, my God. Claire's Care. Big up Claire's Care. Hi, everyone. Unfortunately, there's been some speculation about the amounts Brendan would be receiving. Yo, I love the UK. I love my country and I hate my country. I love my country because we are so unapologetically bad vibes. We hate people making money, even if it's like in a scam. That's why I feel like sometimes I kind of love America because America, like even the American dream is partly about like, what can you get away with? The American dream is almost like get away with whatever you can get away with at all cost in order to help you and your family. That's kind of what the American dream seems like. If you can kind of get, if you can kind of find a loophole to kind of get yourself out of poverty and shit and get your family a nice crib, a couple of cars, you know, a business, like get yourself nice situated and shit. Woo, you're sorted. But I think in the UK, we have a lot of like, I don't know, just bad vibes, animosity against people who figure it out, people who flaunt it, and people who kind of scam the system. We don't like it. Like, there's people in the UK, which is bizarre to me. There's people in the UK that take pleasure and sometimes take it like a, a like it's a job to them. They call up the government to fob in wage thieves. I mean, um, fucking benefit thieves. People that maybe scam the benefit system and get kind of like, you know, maybe they say they're on, they got universal credit, but they say they have an entire family, so they make, you know, they, they claim money for an entire family, but there's no family. Or maybe they claim money for like four people, you know, separately and shit, and they collect all that money. People will fob you in in the UK. If you use your house as like an after hours bar, spot, hangout shit, your neighbor will call the council on your ass. Like, people don't like when people like figure out a little loophole and get some money. People in the UK hate it. There's so many snitches, so many Karens, so many curtain, blind twitches and shit. It's awful. So I'm not surprised this guy scam didn't run. But it's good to see in full HD 4K that the UK is the textbook definition of bad vibes. And here, you, you can't get away with shit, really. If you get away with it, you have to kind of just like shut the fuck up. But you can't really because people are always looking to scam you. Because they are afraid, they're pissed off that you kind of got to the scam first. It's a weird place to live in. 
let's continue. Hi everyone. Unfortunately, there's been speculation about the amounts Brendan will be receiving. <laughs> we always intended to fund Brendan's new car, along with additional expenses, and stated that anything further would go to help our staff and local charity organizations in areas helping those that were affected by the riots. Blood club. It was his car on fire. His car, look, his car getting flipped, getting harangued by violent youths, right? National Front fucking racisos, right? Burning his car, burning his car to the ground legitimately burning his car to the ground and this lady is talking about giving some of that money to the other staff members what what oh my god um to clarify the exact amounts we have set out are as follows brendan will receive twenty eight thousand dollars pound sorry to cover the cost of his new car and insurance our staff were who are affected will receive one thousand Local charities will receive 36,000, 10,000 of which will be dedicated, decided to go to the Cleveland police officers that were involved in it. Imagine, imagine you raised 65 grand because your car got lit on fire by a bunch of fucking racismos, and then they're giving a portion of your 65 grand to the fucking feds. Do you know how fucking angry you'd be? They're giving some of your money to the police. The police that weren't protecting you, that were for the most part protecting some of those racists that were coming after you based solely on the color of your skin, and they're giving them money. For what? Fair enough, fair enough, right? Fair enough. If these racists or if these police officers were actually in the middle stopping both sides from being violent. But I saw a lot of that riot footage online, right, and offline. And a lot of that footage, I saw a lot of very pale, pasty looking white people in Lonsdale sneakers chasing after black people like we were living in the fucking, you know, in the fucking 60s in America or some shit. And they weren't stopping them. They were letting them kick them in the head, punch them, spit at them, do all sorts of madness. So those same police officers, I don't, no, I'm sorry. You don't get no money. You don't get no money. You did your job very poorly. You don't get any money. I'm sorry. Especially not about 65,000. It continues. Another 10,000 will go to the cleanup which includes two churches in Middlesbrough and two mosques. I swear the guy's Christian. Why, why would he be donating a portion of his proceeds to a mosque for their cleanup? Don't they have other people in their community that can help do that? Plus, I'm a fucking Christian. Why do I do that? The remaining amount will go to another organization, charities, <coughs> and will continue <coughs> to update the fundraiser as we decide on this. If you do not wish to, um, if you do not wish your donations to be used as outlined by above, Please be assured that you can request a refund on donations over the week by contacting GoFundMe's team here. So Claire or the person from this company is standing on business and saying, we never agreed to give him all the money. We agreed to give him a portion of the money to cover the cost of his car and his insurance. But the rest of it was going to go to the team. That is a piss take, especially when most likely this Brendan fellow was counting on that P. He had already promised his parents, his siblings, his relatives, certain amounts. He had probably holidays booked in. He probably he probably even sent a request in to HR to get his holiday approved coming up in the summer. He probably had holiday books in or backed up that he never used. He was looking forward to his vacation and they completely crushed this guy's dreams, which I, like I said before, I don't mind because like I said before, I think fake or like soft scamming is over. If you're gonna scam, if you wanna beg for money, you have to beg up front. You have to ask, give me money. You have to open your hands out and say it with your whole chest. Put your GoFundMe in your fucking link in bio. Have it shared all over your social media page. Really lean into it. Start crying on Instagram. You have to really lean into the sob story, the victimhood complex, if you want that money. You can't do that whole like, oh, I'm gonna let my workplace do it. Nah, 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 nah. That's the price you paid. You try to kind of do it from afar. You don't want to look like you were begging. You don't want to look like you are in need. And now look, you got fucked over. So that's what you get. But here's the statement from the boss of this place, right? This is the boss of the place. The boss of the place where this guy works at. The queen. The, cunt, the fucking, um, you know, the, <laughs> the, the hater in residence. 
said as follows. The first and last statement I'll be issuing in relation to the speculation on the GoFundMe page. I won't be replying to any comments. You know when somebody says that as an opening paragraph, they're, they're going to be on some bullshit. She already say, look, I'm not even going to, I don't even want to talk about this. But I'm going to talk about this one last time. I'm not going to answer any questions. <laughs> Claire is a fucking bad vibes queen. Firstly, we want we when we made the GoFundMe page, we stipulated that we were raising money for a car for Brendan and for charities that supported with the riots. Therefore, any of that donation donated for those two things. Look at that fucking look how she right. That's the owner of a company. Therefore, anyone that donated donated for those two things. When the GoFundMe page reached a high, as it did. Me and Brendan spoke about the car and he would like and ask, yo, honestly, only certain people can have this kind of run with because not to be that kind of guy. He does look a bit meek. He does look a bit, you know, a little bit pleasant. He does look a bit happy. You know, he's the kind of guy when when his white colleagues say, oh, my God, your hair. Can I touch it? He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, got, he's one of those type of kind of guys, right? He looks a little bit happy and pleasant, but there's no way that I'm stipulating or discussing or like brainstorming what car I'm going to buy with my fucking work. It's none of your fucking business. I don't care you set up the fucking go from me. Go and spin on two of my middle fingers. I'm not discussing to you what I'm about to purchase. Like, mind your fucking business. But in this respect, you probably saw it as like, they're trying to help me. This is my workplace. It's like, look, one thing you have to always learn, especially in a capitalist world, in a capitalist world that we live in, your employer is not your friend. They pay you for your time. You give them your time for money, but they are never and they will never ever be your friend. Always go into any interaction with your workplace. Unless it's your own workplace you do for yourself, cool. Then you're lucky, you can do what you want. Kudos to you. But if you work for the man, the man, the woman, the day, the dems, they are never your friend. Doesn't matter what they say, what they look like, even worse if they're from the same community as you, if they have the same outlook on life as you, they are not your friend. Same goes for HR. HR aren't there to protect the staff. HR are there to protect the company from the staff or from the employees. Be very cautious of that. Anyway, it continues. Da, da, da. When we go to the family page, reach the high as it did. Brendan spoke about the, me and Brendan spoke about the car that he would like. And I asked if he, I could help him find one. <laughs> this Brendan guy is whatless. This is what, this is why I've said before in the past. And I think I'm going to stand by this in my full 10 toes ashy dusty feet i believe people who go on holiday with their friends people who go on like work trips with their friends people who go out on dinner with their friends and do that thing where they ask you what's the what's on the menu or they basically ask you to give them a rundown on the itinerary on what you're gonna do on holiday or what sites they should check out and don't use google for themselves those people deserve everything bad that's gonna happen to them on holiday Losing their keys, losing their passport, their phones. Whatever bad happens to them, they deserve it. Because people that are like, that act like that helpless and always need help. Oh, can you help me find a car? Can you help me do this? Can you help me book into this? It's like, this is what you get. You acted helpless. It worked in some respect because it probably got you the job because you're like this lovely, lover, lovable teddy bear type of person. They all wanted to help you out. You kind of don't speak English well. They kind of want to integrate into the company. They want to feel like they're doing a good deed by helping out this person that might be like a name. You know what I mean? All this sort of nonsense. It cut, he, led, he, led, he led into that and it worked for him. But then in the end, it ended up biting him in the ass because they took the piss out of him. It continues. Um, he also informed me of Pacific Church he would like some of the money to go to. I have received so much hate for not letting the GoFundMe give to Brendan the full 60K when that would be illegal, as we would have mis misled donations or donators by saying some of it would go to charities. We have requested GoFundMe directly pay Brendan charity so no money passed through our account. GoFundMe has agreed to release funds once people have seven days to request a refund if they so wish. If anything, doing um, this GoFundMe page has cost us money, having to seek legal advice for slander and false statements published. If I've had parenting questions, threats, countless phone calls, voicemails, texts, emails. We've deactivated our Facebook and Instagram page due to the comments that we are scammers and that the money lies to with GoFundMe. We don't dis receive any of it into our business. We've had to report threats. Hold on. Did they say some of it goes to the people that work at the company? So obviously she's lying. 
some of it's going to go to churches, charity. He's going to get 28k out of the 65. And I think she mentioned something like a thousand is going to go to other stuff. So is it going, to, is it going through you guys or not going through you guys? That's the question. It continues. Um, we don't receive any of the business. We don't receive any of it into our business. We've had to report threats to the police. <laughs> Trolls online <laughs> that are wanting us to run this business into the ground by putting 100 plus career jobs at risk posts despite claiming to love and support carers. None of it makes sense, people. And it continues. Is there more there? None of it makes sense. I've received so much hate for not telling GoFundMe to give Brendan the full 50k. Um, we've had the. Uh, uh, Myself and Ellie Smart are mothers. We are normal people, normal people that go above and beyond for their employers and try to do the good thing. People that preach about mental health in the meantime, pushing someone into the worst place of their lives. Thank you for the people that have always supported us and continue to do so in these horrific times. Yo, first of all, I, all carers, to be fair, carers are like nurses, isn't it? They think way too much of themselves anyway. People that work in care are some of the worst people you'll ever meet. S goes with nurses. Nurses think they're legitimately angels. Carers think they're God's gift to the earth. Like the ego on some of these people is fucking obscene. And I love seeing these people being brought back down to earth and be reminded, hey, you are a scumbag and you're a piece of shit just like the rest of us. Just because you've got your little fucking carer thing on and you look after people that are vulnerable and blah, 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 blah. bro, you get paid a good salary to do so. You're in a job industry or a market where there's not a lot of turnover. Essentially, once you get your licenses or your partial your, your accreditation, whatever you need to do to work in a place, you basically have a job for life. Like, don't act like you're being this, like, altruistic person. You're doing it because it's got good job security. You make good, decent money. The hours are pretty decent as well. You get good vacation times. Bloody blah, 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 blah. But these motherfuckers walk around like they are legitimately untouchable. So it's good to see everybody, see them in a light and see them for the scammers that they actually are. They're the worst. They're the worst people in the world. I swear to God. Yes, the job that they do is somewhat noble, but fuck off with this whole like holy than thou shit. You are pieces of shit and scammers just like the rest of us. In this situation, it's easy. The right thing to do in this situation would have been to just give the guy the whole 60K. We all know that, right? But the main mistake this kid made, the biggest mistake that he made is letting his company set up the GoFundMe for him. The moment he let his company set up the GoFundMe for him and push that narrative of him being helpless and him not knowing what he's doing and needing help and needing support from his community, they took the piss out of him. And I think justifiably so. Because I think he was ashamed of the GoFundMe. He didn't want to seem like he was begging. So he did it through a conduit, through a proxy. And then he ended up getting scammed. Which is why I say, if you want to scam... If you want to beg, if you want to do a little bit of an okie doke on the internet, do it, but do it with your chest. The days of like doing scamming and all that shit and trying to have your hands clean, they don't exist. People are going to see your fucking trail, your breadcrumb trail of scams. They're going to see the six or seven GoFundMe pages you set up in a calendar year. They're going to question where the fun's gone. They're going to maybe make YouTube videos about you. They might try and cancel you. This might happen, but you're still going to get your money, right? So you're going to have to play the game. You know, you're going to get cancelled. You might get embarrassed. You might get ridiculed online. You might get harassed, harangued, all that shit. But you'll get your money in. Because if he would have done it for his own account, if he would have done it for himself on his own platform, he would have got that money. Especially being a fucking minority. There's no way GoFundMe would have forced him to give money to charity. You know what I mean? They wouldn't have wanted, they wouldn't have wanted to seem like a platform that was withholding money from a black man. But, uh, nah, they would never have done it. But if he would have he should have done it for himself. He did it for his company. They fucked him over and he really can't complain now. He really, really can't complain now. But I do love, I absolutely do love, I absolutely do love the flagrant nature as of which we hate in this country. We hate so hard. We hate so true that even your place of work, doing something that might seem like a good thing, inevitably will try and fuck you. That's the main, main message of this story. So big up Brendan. Hopefully he gets his money. Hopefully he gets his money. Actually, hopefully not. I don't want to get his money. Fuck him and his money. Save up for me a job and get your car yourself. Don't fucking go and go for me. Like go for me should be reserved for people that actually need it. You don't need fucking. You don't need to like raising free ground on go for me is useless. Like you, you use go for me for fucking 
ten thousand pound increments. You don't use GoFundMe for three grand. You know what I mean? Uh, that's fucking preposterous. Go go to work, save up your money like the rest of us, and buy yourself a car on fucking eBay or something. You don't need GoFundMe to fucking make it your money. That's what I think. But what do I know? What do I know?